The DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents The Cavalcade of America, starring John Lund and Joan Caulfield. Good evening. This is Joan Caulfield, speaking for both John Lund and myself from the stage of historic Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee. We're happy to be here tonight for this special cavalcade broadcast. Our play, Honor Bound, recreates the story of a hero of Nashville and the Confederacy, Sam Davis. John will play the part of Sam, and I'll be Connie Hardison, the girl who loved him. <laughs> The year 1861, just after the first battle at Manassas Junction. Place, Nashville, Tennessee. A grand ball is in progress. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the opening grand march. As your mayor, I should like to propose a toast to the glorious Rock City Guards, leaving tomorrow, the finest company in the 1st Tennessee Volunteer Infantry, which, as everyone knows, is the finest regiment in the Army of the Confederacy. Yeah! Pray, let the dancing begin. Gray. Gray Hardison. Oh, pardon me, ma'am. Oh, Gray. Anybody seen Gray Hardison? Excuse me, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Dr. Shaw. Sam. Sam Davis. I didn't know they let the Rutherford rifles in here. Well, sir, we may not have fancy uniforms like the Rock City Guards, but we country boys are hooting off the war tomorrow, too, you know. <laughs> Say, have you seen Gray? Gray Hardison? Lordy, what a crowd. Well, I saw him just a moment ago. Oh, look over there. Well, that's Gray. Oh, thanks, doctor. Sorry. Beg your pardon, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Mr. Hardison, I believe. Sam Davis, you old ring tail cat of what are you doing in Nashville? Oh, mingling with the gentry for a change. Ray, I came up here tonight with the notion I might persuade you to help me round up a few kindred spirits from our class and sort of stage a reunion with refreshments, of course. Well, I must say, Sam, you were more polite in the old days. Oh, I haven't you noticed. Huh? Oh. Well, I, I, I do beg your pardon, miss, uh, ma'am. Please excuse me. Thompson? I, I want you to meet Sam Davis, who used to be my roommate at Western Military Institute. Sam, this is my, this is my sister, Connie. How do you do, Miss Connie? Uh, I mean, Miss Constance. Miss Hardison. Gray has told me lots about you in his letters, Mr. Davis. Oh, nothing flattering, Sam. Nothing flattering, old boy. <laughs> I can imagine. You see, ma'am, we drew up on a side an hour ago, and I heard music. Where well, there's music, I said, there I'll find Gray Hardison. But I didn't expect to find you. Father. Might I have the honor of this dance? Why, why certainly, Mr. Davis. You know that tomorrow I shall be the most unpopular girl in all Nashville. I've danced with no one but you all night, and... Do you know that tomorrow I'll be halfway to war in a most uncomfortable, cold, hard, flat car? And that I may never come back? This is the last dance, you know. The last dance? Oh, dear heaven, don't let it be the last dance. But it wasn't. Oh, it was a glorious night. There were high hopes and sweet promises. And when dawn came to the Valley of the Cumberland, Sam and I were engaged. And yet, there was something strange about that night. In its darkness and wind, it seemed as though we weren't alone. Sometimes, or was it my imagination? I thought I saw Sam start as though a hand were laid upon his shoulder. But there wasn't time then to question nameless fears. 
And anyway, I was so proud. Indeed, weren't we all proud of those fine, chivalrous young men in gray and gold sash, wheeling their mounts and flashing their sabers and clattering off to the glory of the Confederacy. Then, dreadful months passed with no word of Sam, and I was worried. I worried even more when at last I did hear, for Sam had become a scout in the Army of Tennessee. <laughs> Come in. Captain Coleman, sir? Oh, yes, Davis. I sent for you. Well, Sam, don't you know me? Why, why, no. Should I know you, sir? Well, sir, suppose I didn't have this beard and, and here, here. Here, I'll remove these spectacles. Dr. Shaw. Now Captain Coleman, in the service of the Confederacy. Well, I'll be... Sit down, Sam. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Sam, how long is it since you've seen Constance Hardison? Oh, nearly two years, sir. Mm-hmm. Not since the Yanks took Nashville. But I've had letters smuggled out. Did she mention her brother, Gray Hardison? No, no, she didn't. I've heard nothing of Grace and Shiloh. Sam Young Hardison has been working for me as a scout. As a matter of fact, he's in Nashville right now, Sam. And he has information of extreme importance to General Bragg at Chattanooga and our army of the Tennessee. I want you to get it from him. You know the country roads around Nashville. Can you do it, Sam? Of course, sir. He's at the Hardison's place. Now, you're to leave tonight. The Federals are pretty riled up over the information we're collecting and passing on to General Bragg. They've detached an entire regiment, the 7th Kansas Cavalry, to scour Central Tennessee for the man they know as Coleman and his scouts. I'll be careful, sir. Good. May God ride with you, son. <laughs> Connie. And my darling, it's been so long. So terribly long. Two years. Oh, darling, I've missed you. Oh, yes, my dearest, I've missed you too. Connie, I haven't much time. I have something very important to do. Where's Gray? Gray's not here, Sam. Not here? Well, there are federal patrols about it, and we were afraid they what might... What did you do? Where's he now? There was only one place I could be sure of. Zach, he's the only servant we have left. Zach and I... Took him to your home, out in Smyrna. How long ago? Yesterday. Last night after dark. But Zach hasn't come back. And... Sam, I'm afraid they may have caught Gray. He left nothing but Captain Coleman? No papers? No. He, he couldn't be sure anyone was coming for them. But, Sam, he left a federal overcoat behind. He said if Coleman sends anyone, maybe this will come in handy on, our, on his way back through the line. Where is it, dear? Right here. In, in the cupboard. Good. Hmm. No insignia. How weird. But, Sam, if you should be captured, they'll hold you as a spy. It's a risk I'll have to take. Captain Coleman expects me back by tomorrow night. The Union Army may move against Bragg any day. Once they do, Gray's information will be useless. Darling, I must go now. Oh, Sam. Connie, do you still love me? Oh, I do, Sam, I do. Darling, do you... Do you remember the time we had our photographs taken by Mr. Gears? After the dance? Or will I ever forget? I had the pictures put in a locket, and I've worn it ever since. Here, you take it, dearest, as a charm, Sam. Against, well, against all evil things. Against all evil things, my love. And now, goodbye. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye. Glad to see you. Mother, is Gray Hardison here? No, no, Sam, not tonight. But his body servant is. Oh, Zach. You, Zach? Yes, Miss Davis. Oh, Mr. Sam. Oh, thank the good Lord. Here's the papers. Oh, praise the Lord, I was rid of them at last. Take them all. Thanks, Zach. Let's see him. Wonderful. Wonderful. Sam, 
What are they? Drawings of Union fortifications around Nashville. Detailed plans for the Union advance. This means victory for the Army of Tennessee. Zach. Yes, sir? Zach, what happened to Mr. Gray? He was hurting the legs, Mr. Sam. Hurt bad. He says, Zach, you take these papers and head for Miss Davis' home. Well, Zach and I searched for him all day today. Come sundown, we, we had to give up. Reckon the whole countryside is swarming with Kansas cavalry looking for you scouts. Sam. Sam, that coat. What are you doing in a Yankee coat? Maybe it'll help me get through. Oh, I'm tired. Tired. Well, you, you better get some sleep, son. I got to go while it's still dark. I'll call you before daylight. All right. For just a bit. Mother. Yes, son? You remember that, that hymn you used to sing? Yes. Sing it for me now. All right. On Jordan stormy banks I stand And cast a wistful eye You know, that song that sort of carries you back. Yes. Yes, Sam. Go to sleep now. Come on, Prince. Come on, boy. Oh! Oh, boy. Oh, Prince. Get down from your horse. All right. But what's the matter? Hold his horse, Corporal. Yes, sir. Where? Oh, 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 yes, sir. Where? Good sight seeing one of our union officers down here at Minor Hill. Who are you? And where do you belong? Private Adams, sir. 21st Illinois. 21st Illinois, eh? What kind of an outfit you got on there anyway? <laughs> Not too regulation, I reckon, at that. As soon as I join up with my regiment, I aim to get a new issue. You know where the 21st is, sir? I'll ask the questions. What town in Illinois are you from? Uh, Springfield. Where do you live in Springfield? On 6th Street. Where'd you leave your regiment? Over Nashville way before I got lost, sir. Uh-huh. You're a bad guesser, Johnny. Too bad you didn't know the 21st Illinois is from Mattoon, not Springfield. And it's down near Vicksburg. Now, will you tell me who you are? I'm Sam Davis. All right, Sam Davis. For the next few days, you're going to be the guest of the 7th Kansas Cavalry. You're listening to Joan Caulfield as Constance Hardison and John Lund as Sam Davis in Honor Bound. Tonight's Cavalcade of America comes to you from 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 the stage of the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, and is presented by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> As our story continues, Sam Davis, captured by federal troops, is brought to the jail at Pulaski. In here, Davis. Here's another non-paying guest for you, Corporal. Pickens has been pretty good in the hill country lately. What's the matter with this one? He's limping. This boot hurts my left foot pretty bad. Could somebody help me? Yeah, we got all the conveniences, even a doctor. Dr. Shaw! Yes, Corporal? One of your fellow prisoners. Oh. What can I do for you? Lad's lame. Have a look at him, will you? Well, of course. Yeah, let's get the boots off. Maybe you know Dr. Shaw, Davis. Dr. Shaw? No. No one ever saw him before in my life. I don't get around much. All right, Dr. Shaw. Take care of him. They're gone now, Sam. We can talk. 
Did they find the papers on you? Yes. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, no, that's too bad. They picked me up near Pulaski last night. But they don't know I'm Coleman. They'll never find out from me. Yes, Shh, quiet now. Corporal's coming back. Well, you've got a bad foot there, Davis. I'm sorry I had to hurt you. Well, don't worry, doctor. I can stand it. Don't worry at all. Show the prisoner in, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. This way, Davis. Davis. Yes, sir. You know who I am? General Dodd, sir. Command in the Kansas troops. When you were caught, you had on your person detailed information concerning my command. And it was intended for General Bragg at Chattanooga. Well, my boy, wasn't it? I can't answer that question, General. Davis, you're one of Captain Coleman's scouts. Now, son, the plain fact of the matter is we want Coleman. Where is it? You know... Where is Coleman? Sam. It is Sam, isn't it? Yes, sir. How old are you, my boy? Twenty-one, sir. Son, do you realize the seriousness of your situation? Unless you help me find Coleman, I shall be compelled to order your trial as a spy by court-martial. The evidence will surely convict you. You know what that means, Sam. Yes, General Dodge. It means I'll hang. Think of your mother, Sam. And there's uh, someone else? Yes. I thought so. Well, think of her. Think of the life that might be yours. Sam, don't force me. Just tell me where Coleman is, and I'll give you a safe conduct to pass back to the Confederate lines. General Dodge, if I don't tell you, my life is over. If I do tell you, my life won't be worth living. I'll have sent another man, my friend, to die for me. Well then, General, I'll have to die. But, Sam, listen You're to doing me. your duty as a soldier. Let me try to do mine. You have my deepest respect and admiration. Nevertheless, Lieutenant. Yes, sir? Draw up orders for a court-martial to be held tomorrow. At the court finds the accused, Samuel Davis, guilty of all specifications and charges, and does therefore sentence him to be hanged by the neck until he is dead on Friday, November 27th, at Alaska, Tennessee. Come with me tomorrow, sir. I'll be with you all the way, Sam. You have the letter for my mother and the other one to be delivered to Dr. Shaw? They'll be delivered. Now you will try to sleep. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, I'll sleep. Should I? Should I? Wear this locket as a charm, Sam. Against all things evil. Against all things evil. Against all things evil. But it's not good to die, Connie. I won't. I won't die. I'll tell them. You hear, Connie? 
I'm going to tell him. Connie. Connie. Sam. Connie. Sam, my boy, wake up. Huh? Wake up, wake up, Sam. Why? Why, it's daylight. Yes, yes. You were dreaming, boy. Is it... Is it time yet? Almost. Sam, have you changed your mind? No. No, I haven't changed my mind. I'm awake now. Yes, Jeff. All right, Sam. You needn't help me, Jeff. Samuel Davis. It is my sad duty as Provo Marshal to... to carry out the order of the military court. However, I am authorized by General Dodge to tell you once more here on the gallows that you can still go free if you'll tell us the whereabouts of Captain Coleman. I'd die a thousand deaths before I betray a friend. Any last request, Sam? May I... May I give the signal myself? When you're ready, Sam, close your right hand. Hey, Chaplain Young, could you do one more thing for me? There's a hymn my mother used to sing. On Jordan's stormy banks. Would you sing it for me? I'll... I'll try, Sam. On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wistful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land. Where my possessions lie. Where my possessions lie. near Louisville. Oh, I'm glad. Miss Hardison, it's not easy for me to come here. Dr. Shaw, wasn't there some way you could have saved No, them? Miss Constance, there was no way. Had I revealed myself, I would have put a noose around many other necks. Once the enemy knew that Dr. Shaw and Captain Coleman were the same, every friend of Dr. Shaw would have been arrested. Why, even you might have come under suspicion. Oh, what does it matter about me? About all of us now. Miss Constance, Sam died for a cause. He didn't die for just one man, but for all of his comrades. And he will always be remembered whenever men in the North as well as in the South speak of loyalty and sacrifice and honor and virtue. Oh, Sam. <laughs> Before he went away, he asked the prison chaplain to give me this for you. The locket. And a letter. 
You had better read it, Miss Constance. Dearest Constance, I go to my death with love for you in my heart. With your dear face before my eyes. God willing, I shall love you still beyond whatever portals I may pass tomorrow. This locket did not keep me from all harm, my dear, but it did serve me as a charm against all things evil. For it is not an evil thing to die for all one holds most good. Believe me, I am forever yours. Cavalcade cast for Honor Bound, tonight's story of the Confederate scout, Sam Davis. Next week, Cavalcade returns to New York and presents another popular Hollywood star, Dorothy McGuire. Our story, The Golden Needle, is a romantic drama of a girl from a small town who, because of her ingenuity with the sewing needle, helped make American women the best dressed in the world. Be sure to join us. Tonight's original Cavalcade play, Honor Bound, was written by George Faulkner and was suggested by the novel on Jordan's Stormy Banks by Adelaide Rowell, published by Bob's Merrill. And Sam Davis, Confederate Hero, by Edith Johns Rucker Whitley, published by the Sam Davis Memorial Association. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. The program was directed by John Zoller. Cavalcade of America is presented by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Stay tuned for the Baby Snook Show, followed by Bob Hope.